The Rink Rat Report podcast is brought to you by BetStamp, the ultimate sports betting companion app. Track, follow, and analyze your bets across multiple sports books. And while you're there, check out the world's first verified buy and sell marketplace for sports betting picks. Download the app today. The Rink Rat Report podcast is also brought to you by Season 2 of The Lock Garage. Host Marco Shara, a Toronto criminal defense lawyer, interviews various criminal lawyers about the practice of criminal defense, gets them to share their war stories, and helpful tips for up-and-coming lawyers interested in the area of law. Out now on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. Step into the garage, listen to the experts, and get a tune-up. Are we recording? Yes, sir. All right, welcome everyone to the Rink Rat Report podcast. Today that we are recording it is Tuesday, March 1st. You'll probably be listening at March 2nd. As always, joined by Josh and Jason. Great week, guys. Great week. 3-0. Oh, good. That was an interesting good week, to say back. the least. Um, when I asked if we were recording, I genuinely didn't know. You caught me off guard there. But all good now. Uh, let's get into it. our presenting sponsor for today. Support for the Rink Rat Report podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best men's below-the-waist grooming champion of the world. I got the chance to try on the underwear this week, 12 out of 10. In- absolutely incredible. So soft, like just so comfortable. Really made me think that I need to update my underwear wardrobe because everything I have own is pathetic. Did you guys get a chance to try that one? I have not yet. I have not tried the underwear, but um, I'm I'm just gonna keep going with the ball deodorant. It's literally oh, the greatest yeah. thing ever invented. Honestly, I'm not like I'm not even being it's like a fresh breeze. Seriously, see, it's it's fantastic. And if you haven't, if you have not used it yet, what are you doing? If you sit down for the majority of your day, or even if you go to the gym and sweat a lot. You should be using this, honestly. 100%. And that's that's not a joke. But anyways. Anything to add? I think you guys do a great job talking about, about Manscaped. About our below yeah. the waist. I, I, and it's how a Manscaped great company. Is keeping us up. I mean, they've, I love their social media presence too. If I, yeah. You can just follow them on Instagram, Twitter. It's, it's like a cool company. And when you support them, you support us using our code RINKRAT, R-I-N-K-R-A-T. Uh, yes, use code rink at, rink rat at checkout for 20% off and free worldwide shipping. That is rink rat, R-I-N-K-R-A-T, at manscaped.com. Um, let's get into it. Before we get onto the Leafs, let's talk about all the, the goals we scored in men's league today. <laughs> and moving on from that, let's get into the Leafs this that, week. That was a low blow. <laughs> you guys didn't score. Yeah, that was a low blow. <laughs> Anyways, um, Let's get into it. So what I, we wanted to do this week is take a look at, we had some criticisms, some pretty harsh criticisms last week of the Leafs, specifically the second line, uh, the defense in front of the net, our depth scoring, the goalies. Let's just circle back on that and see how we feel on it. I don't want to just be throwing out takes into the wind and then kind of moving on, right? Like let, Let's keep addressing how how is it going? Is it progressing in the right direction? Uh, we'll take a look at the standings a little bit later and so a heavy, heavy stat surfing this week because there were some numbers that really caught my eye. Let's get into it. The forwards, the second line. Saw some goals from them. Yeah, that's good to see. Even though the, the one uh, in Washington, it was an even strength goal, not fully at 5-on-5. Five five. It was a 4-on-4 four four goal, but I did like the... Uh, I thought William Nylander played well this week, especially at 5-on-5. Five five. Um I okay. think more so the Washington game. Yes. The Washington yes. game, he was solid. That's the one that's kind of fresh in my line. And I think that, yeah. like, after the hit that John Tavares, like, after that little scuffle with Tom Wilson, I thought John Tavares played fantastic to end out that, that game in Washington. Earlier on in the week, eh, it's not not that good. But again, like, he's Bro, bad. A 10-goal game and you get zero. Yeah, he but- was honestly bad for, like, two and uh, two-thirds games. Yes. And then that but- one-third... Made a big difference, and it, it was huge. And my, mind you, he is battling an illness now, right? He is playing through a some form of stomach bug. Oh, is were, that confirmed? Yes, that's what Sheldon. Keith he's said. been. They, oh, they've been saying like, that, but who knows how much that's. <laughs> well, Ilya Mikheyev had to leave to in the in the wild game, so I don't so know. So did Nylander in the Red Wings game. Yeah, it's a quick little poop game. Yeah, shout out Lamar game. Jackson. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, but but I mean, yeah, that that the. Was it Tavares two assists or just the one? It was two, I think. Two assists and a post. Mm-hmm. The post, that was a that, good yeah, shot. That was, that was a great shot. He got the zone on his own too, which was nice but to yeah, see. That game, but. Winning, that game winning strip on Faravari on Washington had himself 
a tough game, giving up the puck, coughing up the puck in his own end twice uh, that led to goals. I mean, partially, he's not that good of a player. But I, I, uh, so. Here's the, the one correction I'm going to make. I, I don't know if he coughed them up. I think those were just two really effective forechecking yes. plays. Yeah. Well, yeah, still had it on his stick kind of, and then he got stripped. Yeah, but the, like I don't So wanna... what I was trying to get at there was – Partially, he didn't move the puck, but also partially, that's a heavy forecheck from the Leafs. Yes. Especially that first line. A lot of people say, like, oh, responsible. Uh, they're scoring, obviously, but also, like, the defensive metrics are supporting it as well. Well, they don't even have to play defense. They just have the puck all game. But to stay on topic, the second line a little bit, what did you guys think overall of this week? Honestly, I felt bad that they took Alex Kerfoot off the line because he is still consistently playing really well, and I want to give him some credit yeah, again. He played well against the Red Wings when he, he wasn't did. on that line. He did. He played great against the Red Wings not on that line. You, like that, Our third line has been shockingly effective for a long time, and it's really good to see like offensively, not just defensively. You expect them to you know, check hard. You expect them to transport the puck out of the defensive zone and get a change, chip and chase, but... McKay of coming back, I think, has made a really big difference for that line. He fits mm-hmm. really well. And Camp has been playing fantastic as well. And whether it's Kasha or Kerfoot or Engvall, all those guys seem to fit in well. Mm-hmm. But back to the second line, I, uh, I did not think they played well in the first two games. No. I, I think Nylander had a great individual effort to score against Detroit. And then uh, he had another shot that was pretty good as well. But it was a lot of like individual plays and then nothing. There wasn't a lot mm-hmm. of sustained pressure. Detroit, like Detroit, clearly didn't have their best in that game either. No, uh, and I, I like Tavares was totally ineffective in that game. I thought his foot speed is definitely mm-hmm. an issue, but like you could see, there's ways we can overcome it. Mm-hmm. But that Nylander goal was like disgusting. The slap shot, disgusting. On mm-hmm. that goal, when you really, really break it down, like okay, it's one on one kind of Nylander and the defenseman the goalie's able to challenge out really far because the defenseman's able to cut off Nylander there so it's not the highest percentage shot for Nylander what i really love about this goal when you really break it down he comes down on the puck and it looks like he's kind of going glove side right it looks like he's putting this slap shot glove side as he's dragging through the slap shot as you know you you when you take a slap shot a couple inches behind the puck and then your stick drags along the ice, you get that whip and then the puck gets off. He originally lines it up where it looks like glove side. He turns his wrists over and almost hits a draw on Nadelkovic. Yeah, and you he can did. See, when you watch the slow motion, you can see like the hooking motion of the puck and then it just picks a corner in the net. Like I've seen him in the past where he winds up, it looks like it's going low, and then he gets under it, and it gets it goes up on a good trajectory, and it surprises the goalie. We saw him do that a few years ago against Scott Darling, who's 6'6". I've never seen anyone actually intentionally hook the puck. It will be interesting to see if he's able to do it again. Maybe you do have to be in the right situation. You do have to have time and space with the puck, but... I, I'd really be curious to see if he's able to do this m- more often because when the puck's changing trajectory, especially at that velocity that he hits it at, it's it's going to go in a lot more. <laughs> yeah, it was a sick goal. And yeah. it's crazy that there were 16 more goals in that game. That was a crazy, crazy game. It's insane. I think, I think, again, if we're just talking strictly second line, you know, have they done enough to alleviate the concerns to where, oh, you know what, now let's just forget about grabbing a 2LW. No. Not really. No. I mean, I liked against Washington, they carried the puck in a little bit more. We said that in a previous episode, they were dumping it in a lot. Uh, mostly Leafy's pointed that out uh, this morning. I thought that was a great, great point there. Uh, so that was that was good to see. Um, I, I, it's a good game from them. Hopefully they can carry this over i'm not going to overreact to one game mm-hmm. i'm not going to overreact to a slump but you know we need to they need to start getting it going a little bit more in order for us to say okay we don't need a second line winger even though just had a good player guys <laughs> yeah yeah why not but yeah the that the washington game was a great step in the right direction from that line in general it's just yeah, well, you're talking talking about William Nylander's shot. We kind of talked about this in our like little group chat a little bit. We kind of like he started off so hot, like he, his goals have kind of tapered off recently. Start hopefully he starts to pick that up soon. He only he has 21 goals in 53 games this year. I I would expect him to get more, and he just mm-hmm. 
I I, I want to see him to like he has a fantastic shot. He was shooting a lot at the beginning of the year. I don't know this this is just me from from me watching. I don't, I don't really have stats to back this up, but I feel like he shot a lot less in this second line slump. And I, I should have looked into that, but um, again, like he should he I I just want him to shoot more. That's that's all I'm saying is that he has a fantastic shot. Let's see him shoot more because at the beginning of the year, like I, I think maybe two months, maybe three months into the year, if someone said. Yeah, William Nyland is probably going to score 35 goals this year. You're like looking at his pace. Yeah, he's probably going to do that. And now it's looking a little bit tougher for him to do. So, yeah, that's true. Um, I I think he's still shooting a lot. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. I like sorry. I'll look it Overall, up right now. Yeah. It does it seem like maybe at the end they've had the puck list, but like, would you expect him to have more shot attempts this year than John Tavares? Like that seems pretty crazy to me. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but that also when you explain like the transformation of William Nylander, that's also why when he played with Matthews, maybe he, the line wasn't bad, but you weren't getting the most out of Matthews. Mm -hmm. Maybe that slightly ha shows the transformation Tavares needs to make as a player too. If it's less, you know, he's gonna be less of a rush chance player with Nylander because Nylander is better than him at it right mm -hmm. now, like way better, not even close. Yeah. But Tavares can adapt to more of like a bunting role in that line and do it really mm -hmm. effectively. Get to the net, chase pucks. Ch um, you know, win win puck battles, pass mm -hmm. the puck in front like we saw him do. So maybe it's just a, 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 an example of as Nylander is ascending as a player and Tavares is, I don't want to say descending, but some of his weaknesses are starting to show more. Maybe it's just a bit of a change in role for him, which like not to keep talking and transitioning, but that's why I think adding another rush player, yeah. like Kerfoot's good, but he's not a dynamic player mm -hmm. off the rush. Like mm -hmm. a JT Miller, for example, would really open up things for that line because then you can have like, Miller and Nylander play the Matthews and Marner role, and Tavares can work on getting like his 30 goals in front, which mm -hmm. we know he can do. He's great in front on the power, yeah. but he's fantastic. Yeah. Very good point there. Yeah. I'm still looking up if his pace has gone down. It's gone down very slightly. Okay. Um, but that's so just... the breakdown was over the first 20 games, it was like 60 shots. Uh, this next 20 was 72. And then over the last 13 games, it's been 2.84. Uh, Per game, I believe, which is like fifty six point nine. So it's gone down slightly, but not that much. Mm -hmm. um, it was interesting. You pointed out he's been a lot more of a volume shooter this year, a ton more shots than last year. I think it was like forty more attempts, attempts in the same amount of games, uh, which the same amount of goals that he's getting, he's gotten a few more goals from out further. Last year he scored more from in tight, but once you pointed that out, it was quite interesting that where did he scored his his goal last night. Or against the Capitals? Right in front of it. Right in front of it. <laughs> it was a solid feed from uh, to, to, Tavares, Tavares there. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's a good play going to the net. I, I, I like William Nylander's game. I know right. he could have mm -hmm. sized him defensively, but like the things he does well, he's starting to do like elite. Elite. Okay. So uh, it's just to accept, I get, he's not going to fight him. a guy after Tavares gets hit. He's not going to, mm -hmm. like that's not his game. If you like, I don't, I understand why people didn't like that on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I completely, completely understand. But you just need to accept like, he plays to his strengths. He's not gonna fight. Yeah, and don't expect him to fight. Like then yeah. you're 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 gonna get this stupid opinion of a really good player because he doesn't fight in a mm -hmm. three three game. I, I I get it, but I would back off on that criticism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. A little effective move that uh, this guy Eric from my Sunday men's league uh, applied. There was a six foot six guy who's kind of taking liberties in the game there, holding guys and just doing whatever he wants because he's six foot six. This guy. Maybe he was a little bit stoned. I'm not saying he was. Maybe. Uh, just put his... He got sick of it. And at the end of the game, he's just like, screw it. Put his stick on the ice and just jammed it straight to the guy's skates and took him out. <laughs> That's the Kessel. That, you could do that. It's the yeah. Kessel against John Scott. That's yeah. fun. Weed whack him. <laughs> exactly. Maybe he could imply that. I mean, it's kind of like like um, me complaining that my dog doesn't bark when there's actually like in strangers at the door and he only barks when there's nothing. Um, would I like him to bark when strangers are there? Yes. Like, am I going to expect it though? No. Like, it's just a reality mm -hmm. of life, right? Yeah. You're not gonna you're not gonna start getting Aunt Jemima from your trees in front of your yard. Like, it's just not life. It's just not not gonna just take happen. things for how they are. And you'll be a lot happier, right? The other thing is like st sticking with the forwards. I also think the first line is setting like such an unattainable bar for oh, any true. second line to ever match because like. They are, like you said, it's nonstop. They don't play. They don't have to play defense because the teams cannot break the puck out against them. There's been 
first of all, the Matthews goal against Winnipeg, like the teams think they're out and they backtrack and steal the puck. Mm-hmm. There was another, a couple of them against Washington. Like as soon as Washington got out of the zone, they were able to chip the puck back into the, like, yeah. they cannot get the puck out against these mm-hmm. guys. They forecheck very, very well. They're very tough on puck battles. And then they cycle the puck insanely well too. Like last game against Washington, where are we here? Well, somehow a 55% for Matthews in terms of Corsi four. That's a little bit on the lower end. Interesting. But like people are saying Matthews for Selkie right now. What do you guys think about that one? No. No, like, I don't I'm saying either. David Kahn for Selkie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Honestly, if I had like, to if I had to vote woo. for one player on the Leafs, it would yeah. be David Kahn. Like uh half joking, half not, because like it, the, not the, the the o- Did you award? guys post the, the empty net goal yesterday? I can't no, I, I don't not. normally post empty net no, goals. I, I didn't post but it. I put it on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to take a look at what, what I'm referencing right now, yeah. it'll be there. David Kempf, like takes out the pass, rushes the point, essentially takes out two players, frees up the puck for Mikheyev, who then gets it to Engvall. It was fantastic. Like yeah. just textbook defense. He's a, he's, like, honestly, I've, he's Dennis Rodman. We're no. so wrong. We were so yeah. wrong. Oh, yeah. Jason was way righter than I. His puck skills right. look a little bit better from the beginning of the year. Am mm-hmm. I am I going crazy or maybe just I was saying this to Jason like confidence? He's in a such a defined role. Yeah. Every night David Camp is being told to go out there and do the exact same thing for 53 games. It's been the exact same thing. And I think as like you said as he's done it better and better as the year's gone on, he gets more and more confident. I also think he's playing with guys who really compliment him well. Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't have to be a part of transition. No, he doesn't have to be a volume shooter when Kosh is on the line. He doesn't necessarily have to get pucks when McKayev's there. McKayev gets the pucks. Like mm-hmm. it, it's a really good line and I'm, I'm really happy about it. It's a, it's a diverse line from what we have. And that's what we've been asking for. Can it be maybe a little grittier? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. But, but it does. Philip Deneau is not, you know, banging yeah. bodies shift after shift. He's a smart defensive player. I'm not saying David Kemp is Philip Deneau, but he's going to be deployed that way in the playoffs. So mm-hmm. I like what I've seen. Yeah. He's been, I mean, against the wild, like some of his stat lines, because he is buried so hard against such good competition. It's like very, very tough minutes. Some of the stat lines are a little bit tough, like mm-hmm. 7% expected goals against the wild. But then you get games like Washington where you, he took out, like he played very well against Ovechkin. Did he not? Yeah, yeah, but I'm going to say one. Sorry, go ahead, Jake. I was just going to say his expected goals and like percentages, like goals for uh, Corsi for those things are a li- are going to be a little bit worse because, again, zone starts and like like you said, playing against tough competition. But if you look at like like uh, even strength defense, like uh, from a J Fresh card or even Dom, Evolving Wild, they all have him as like an elite, elite defensive, like uh, defensive impact. Mm-hmm. His even strength defense is like among the best in the league, his impact. So. Yeah. Even though it, it might not be reflected in PK the PK too, the yeah, power P- kill he's been awesome. He's been fantastic on the penalty kill. He's been, I think Evolving Wild has him as the best penalty killer in the league. Last time I checked, but um, yeah, like th- those are the percentages don't reflect it as much, but the extrapolated numbers do give him the credit. But also, like take the percentages with, with a grain of salt here. Like, okay, he had seven percent. That's only because he had absolutely zero expected goals for. But yeah. the, he suppr- still suppressed shots really well. Mm-hmm. When he was on the ice, he was one of the better forwards in terms of expected goals against. Yeah. So even though he didn't generate chances that game, he was still doing a good job at suppressing chances yeah. from the other team, from Eric so. from Felino, whoever he was playing with, Zuccarello, Kaprizov. And zero goals against. Exactly. Right? So that's where the Matthews for Selke thing, I'm like, no, like on ice defensive impacts does not mean you're a good defensive player. Like he kind of blew coverage on that Minnesota goal. Did yeah, he, not? he knew it too, and then he looked and then at guess the, what? He got mad and he yeah. scored two. Yeah, I do. I do think he's a That's, good defensive player. I think yeah. it's not bad. I don't know. He's decent. I think Mitch Marner is probably a better oh, defensive yeah. player than yes. Austin Matthews. I think so. But I think and it shows on the penalty kill. Yeah, like Mitch Marner has committed himself after like f- his entire career to be a good defense. And mm-hmm. every year except maybe one year, he was has been, had positive defensive yeah. impact. So mm-hmm. it's interesting when you watch Mitch Marner like kind of defend he doesn't stop like he will kind of blow by guys whatever but it's like it's a tight turn he's able he's everywhere mm-hmm. like active you're stick. not you're not stopping and starting but you're keeping that speed going you've got the active stick and he's, he's, he's he remains everywhere also the biggest thing that makes a difference that we talk about a lot but like defensively people don't talk about is getting out of the zone mm-hmm. the oh. amount of patience he has on the wall to just make the right play oh yeah he's one of the best in the league at it at wall collections at slowing it down and then making the, the right hook pass. pass hook pass or skate it out or you know chip it 
when you need to chip it or reverse it back to yeah. your D. Like, yeah. pay attention to how many times he just makes the right play and pay attention to how many times other guys who are worse in the league don't even collect the puck off the wall. Yeah. That's what the most difficult play for a winger is collecting the puck off the wall in a breakout. And he makes it look really easy. Do you want to break down that uh, the second Matthews goal a little bit? Yeah, go into well, it because you really like it. No, I mean, that, that's how you play hockey. I don't know. How, it's a perfect goal. <laughs> Like the puck's transitioning out of the zone. Matthews has a hard back check, perfect stick lift, sends it across to Marner. And Marner, before he even touches the puck, has picked up speed underneath the puck. And now when you're attacking downhill against the wild, every it, it makes the D all like all out of sorts because anyone who's played hockey, when someone's coming at you full speed, it's like, oh geez, I gotta pivot and start to and start mm-hmm. to go. And the amount of speed he had in that zone, he literally blew by all their defenders. Matthews, at the same time, is also getting downhill as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. And it's an easy pass and goal. It it was a perfect example of, you know, retrieving the puck in the neutral zone, swinging it out to to Marner. Marner makes a great pass, and Matthews goes to the net. That's, like, perfect hockey. And it makes such a difference when the other team's not really ready for it. You're a little bit out of sorts. You're not – your positioning's not that great. And I also pointed out to you guys in that group chat – uh, in our group chat there, that Kakinen on that play, it's turned over at the blue line. He gets out and he's, he challenges the he he gets his challenge out. He gets to the top of the crease there, but by that time he stops and he doesn't have any momentum going backwards. So he's not able to get over to that Matthews pass as fast as he can, or barely at all. And then as a result, Matthews able to tip it in without having to get much of a shot off. Because Kakinen doesn't have that speed tracking back. It's also because the, how quickly that Marner at, had speed on the puck and attacked in the zone. He was able to like shrink the angle to the net. Mm-hmm. So he was an absolute shot threat there. Mm-hmm. Like He could have shot that. It would have been a, a good chance. Yeah. So Kakinen had to respect that. As opposed to maybe if you swing it around and stop up for a sec. Okay, now the shot's from the top of the circle. It's not as threatening. Yeah. And you can track it to the side. When you attack so hard downhill... You start, every step he takes toward the goalie is improving his expected goals yeah. percentage, right? We talk about it all the time. Get closer and closer to the net, slide it across, it's and downhill. you got a goal. That's what also makes his goal, one of his goals, I think it was his first one against Detroit, a little bit interesting because usually when Marner comes down that wing, you're expecting him to do the, do the hook pass. And in order to do the hook pass, you, you bring it back a little, you jack it back a little, and then you hook it across. He jacked it back. He sent it on net off the defenseman and in. Like, could have possibly sent Thomas Grice a little bit off. Like, he wasn't expecting it. He was I think expecting it 100% that did. 100%. That pass. But also it tipped. So, yeah. made it that much more lethal. And then Marner ends up with four. So, And even right. his second goal in that game. Like, as the puck's developing on the other side, oh, yeah. he's going to the net. He's doing a lot of things really well to get more goals this year. You can mm-hmm. tell he's making yeah. an, an effort to do it. Like, he's getting way more goals in the little... But it's funny, you you sent a couple clips of him like, oh, look at him attack the net here. He's scoring goals recently, and it's kind of showing. And then I just, I sent you a bunch of clips I had from the beginning of the year that I posted when he won Vanilla Player of the Week. But he was still getting What he, What was he doing? He was attacking the net, just couldn't get a bounce. Just Mm -hmm. happens sometimes. Sometimes you squeeze the stick a little bit too hard. I mean, also those guys are going with like elite confidence, right? It's crazy. Oh yeah, nobody can touch them. Nobody can touch them. Where were we? Well, we that's a, we're talking <laughs> forwards. We, yeah, we just we just recap pretty much the forwards. We touched a bit on depth scoring, but Nick Robertson. Oh yeah, Nick Robertson. How do how do we? Wait, he played he played two games or one game this two. week? Two. two? Detroit, Detroit. I thought he was solid. He took that penalty. Unfortunately, he was pl- trying to be physical. Though. Bit of an awkward play. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But he had a couple pretty good shots. I would say. Um, unfortunately, the time on ice was very very low. I believe mm-hmm. he totaled like fifteen minutes even strength time on ice, which probably total time on ice in those two games, which you don't love from mm-hmm. from your 20-year-old or 21-year-old whatever uh, rookie there, but what can you do? Uh, in, the, in the second game, I mean, they didn't have the greatest results, but I like what I see offensively from him at least. Yeah, he looks good in, in, in the offensive zone, and he like work is working hard. Like he, yeah. you can tell by the way that he's playing and skating. Like I'm hungry. I, he wants to stay in this lineup at at all costs, at all costs. And I don't I don't know if he will because like again, you're bumping a pretty good player. Like you're bumping an NHL regular by staying in this lineup. But he's showing that he he can he definitely could be an NHL player. Right, he can play in the NHL. Yeah, I, I've honestly like there. I just the one thing that was sticking out of my mind was that. 
I think in Detroit, there was one shift where he like, I think they were in the zone for a little bit and I've never seen a guy skate off the ice as hard as Nick Robertson ever. Like an NHL player do that in my entire life. He was hustling to that. It was crazy, but I, I thought he played, he, he looks good. Um, I feel like people are kind of placing an unreasonable expectation on him. He's only three years out from his draft year and kind of, people are kind of clamoring for him to get on the second line already. And while it would be fun to see, I just don't know how realistic it is. I, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind seeing him there, obviously, but this is not the preseason. Yeah, it, 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 this is this, like we're 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 trying to we're trying to get first place in our division right now. This is not the time yeah. to test out if Nick Robertson is our second line winger. And like mm-hmm. again, like he's all, he's he was drafted. I think the youngest age possible, right? When he was drafted, yeah. so yeah. he's gonna like he he's gonna take some time to season. And, three, and he's had a couple big injuries. Yeah, and so three years is not. Like, I wouldn't mind him back yeah, in the age. Hundred percent, hundred percent. He's like, it's not like he's lighting it up. Like Kevin Papetti, who I trust on Twitter, was saying, like, I'm not absolutely loving what I'm seeing from Nick Robinson since coming back from injury. Like, he had a couple points in there, here and there, but you'd like to see more out of him in the mm-hmm. AHL first. I mean, but Kyle Dubas seems to really like him. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just conspiracy theorizing this one. Maybe he was showing him off a little bit. Maybe. I mean, if you're, if you're talking about a guy to trade for term, of, let's say they want a guy with term. So you talk JT Miller or I don't know, there's a million, Damon Severson, whatever, whoever the term guy is you want to mm-hmm. say, like he is probably a prime guy to get traded in that trade. Mm-hmm. Agree yeah. or disagree? Yeah, probably. probably. Well, how do you feel probably. about that? Uh, dep- honestly, it all depends who you get back. It all depends who you yeah. get back. And like, it kind of stinks to see such a good young player go, mm-hmm. but it's like, if you, I want to win now. <laughs> yeah. I want it now. Yeah. The other thing is like, I remember before the Leafs signed Kasha and Richie, I was all cranky. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, Robertson better be on the team. But yeah. that's because I was concerned about the depth scoring. Like, we, I don't want to yeah. jinx it, but we have some of the best depth scoring in the league this year. Yeah. Knock on wood. But I'm looking at this. We're on pace to have 11 guys score 15 goals. And the guy who's what not on heck? pace is Wayne Simmons. Ooh, what the heck? Really? Kosh has 11 goals. Spezza has 10 goals. Engvall has nine goals. McCabe has nine goals in 24 games. Kerfoot has eight goals. And he's 30 assists. That's Kampf true. has eight goals. Like, you're, all those guys are going to score 10 goals for sure. They need one more goal each. Wow. It's very impressive. I didn't even notice that. That is a lot. Interesting. That's really cool. That's a good stat right there. Thank you. But, but that's that's what I'm saying about Robertson. Mm-hmm. Like, well, people want him on the second line, but we got to win these games. And <laughs> yeah. Kerf, Kerfoot's been playing well. Kasha has been playing well. Like it's, mm-hmm. I get second power play. I think that's a valid criticism. You want him on the second power. play. Yeah. Then, because yes. like it's, it's Ilya Mikheyev and Wayne Simmons on the second power play. But at the play, same time, it's like, like you can easily take one of those out. Mikheyev no has two power play goals this year. Yeah. Like he's, that's true. He scored nine goals in 25 games. Like Wayne he does Simmons it. is better in front of the net than him. Mm-hmm. So that's the thought process. You're not taking bunting off. You're not taking Spezza off. You're not disrupting that second power play. Just so to, I, I don't think mm-hmm. you're a conspiracy theory theorist here, Joe. I think yeah. the showcase is definitely Boston called up. I'm going to butcher his name. It's Uro Vakanainen. Vakanainen. Uro Vakanainen. Yes. And he's playing with Charlie McAvoy. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a like former it, first te- round pick. Teams do 2017. this. 17. Right? Okay. I see. I see what they're doing there. They're, they're probably going to be gunning to get someone. Um, Maybe his name is uh, Kavid Dreichi, but we'll see. <laughs> Maybe Dodd Daru. Oh, I would hate that. Mm. Damn it. We'll see. Ew. Anyways, uh, we got on the fours. Let's move on to the D. Let's do it. Let's so start. in terms of, I want to get into a little bit more of uh, Ilya Labushkin's game. I just got to say he is coming so much as advertised. This guy offensively, is so bad. You don't really need him to be offensive, but offensively, he is so bad. There was a clip you sent. You're like, watch this play from Mikheyev. He beats out the defenseman. He wins the puck battle. He creates separation. He's able to get it to the point. It gets to Bush. This guy has Rasmus Sandin so wide open on the other side, like just wildly wide open for the National League, and he fires it as hard as he can straight into the defender's shin pads. And then yes, there's some other things there too. It's like, oh my. He's not terrible at moving the puck out of his own end, mm-hmm. which is just incredible. It's just another little Travis Dermott kind of thing where it crosses the red line and it's, uh, 
I forgot how to play hockey. But he is better at defending the blue line, I must say. I've seen a real, couple really great, great plays where he's cut people off at the blue line. And then in front of the net, he is very aggressive, which I really like. Yeah, like, and those very. Those are the two things that we kind of outlined last week that are those are like the most important thing the least do you have to improve on. Yep. And obviously getting a guy like Labushkin, we kind of were we, – it was only one game in, but we were like, yeah, this, this hopefully he can help with that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and he, he was doing very well, especially in the Washington game. I feel like there was – a ton of battles in front of the net that he was just he was just giving the the, the forwards I, I don't even know who there were so many different plays but he was giving them hell he yeah. was absolutely giving them hell so he, he's been doing a great job at covering the front of the net i think he's going to be is he is he playing up with morgan riley now for no. is that what they, the, they mixed up the Same. lines again I, okay. I think especially given that muzzin's out i think they just got him because they wanted their third pair to be way tougher to play yeah. against that's it mm-hmm. yeah and he's done that Simple. Yeah. It's like you said. It's about as simple as it comes. Mm-hmm. He's come exactly as advertised, and I agree <laughs> with it. Honestly, I think having Sandy and Lilligren was a good, fun pair. I never thought that would be a playoff pair, though. I think they mm-hmm. want to get longer and a bit grittier in mm-hmm. front of the net, and he's a perfect player to do it because he's good. Yeah. He's good at those he's, things. He can move the puck. His metrics are good. His stats are good. He is who he is. Just like we yeah. said with William Nylander, exactly. he is who he is. And I, I think that's a good thing because you know. Going into the playoffs with like this jumbled third pair is bad, but I mm-hmm. think right now it's guaranteed Ilya Labushkin will be on the third pair, right D, as long as he's healthy for the yeah. playoffs. Yeah. So yeah, and and I, going off that point about like kind of replacing the Lilligan on on that third role, like we saw it a lot in the Detroit game. Like Lilligan struggled with with keeping his own blue line. He struggled. There was a couple couple opportunities oh, yeah. for the Detroit Lucas Raymond uh, the seventh goal yeah where, where he was like I think the puck was at the red line like at center ice and he was already in his own zone you, you, you simply yeah. can't can't be doing that you're the giving seventh goal you could fit two rav fours yeah. between him and <laughs> and uh Lucas Raymond there that was crazy yeah and and there's there were other times too as well where he uh but it's something he's not he hasn't been that bad at yeah he's, I guess maybe the the upper competition he took a step back because mm-hmm, like, he was playing with Riley that game, right? Yes, uh, playing the yeah. first. I thought that was way too minutes. much of a step up for him. Yeah, like way too yeah. much. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. Uh, now he's scratched. Though. That's why it's such a weird way mm-hmm. to go about it. Like you throw him right to the wolves for two games. I guess that's good. Give him an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And now he's scratched because honestly, he I thought he was really bad in those two games. Mm-hmm. I thought against Washington he struggled on the puck in his own zone. Yeah, he turned the puck over way too much. Not, he had a couple good. Blue line standups, but other than that, he just seemed to struggle. Yeah, I so. I, I believe for one of the goals, he was we he like could have kind of on the penalty kill. He had a defined puck line to that puck should have been out yeah. easily. He fumbled it. He gets eaten up into his hands. I I forget who it was that it might have been Wilson that checked him. They get the puck, swings around, and they score. Like mm-hmm. that's I, I hate it because he's playing overall. I think as well as you'd expect a guy mm-hmm. who's detect, like essentially a rookie to play. 21 years old, first year in the league. But he's just been prone, as I keep saying, to these big negative events that happen on the ice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his decision-making and confidence has never been that that great when it comes to making that next step, um, going from one league to another, I've found. Uh, the biggest thing with him is, like, it takes a little bit of seasoning. We saw this with the Marlies. It took, like, a couple of years for him to get going, and then you start to see the confidence, and then you start to see the results from him. We're seeing a lot of small good things. We're seeing a lot of the right things. Aggressiveness in the defensive zone, ability to pass the puck, ability to handle the puck, ability to get the puck on net from the blue line. It just hasn't fit all together against good competition, I've found. against In third pairing, we've seen some very good games from Timothy Lilgren. Uh I just think, like as you mentioned, actually, Games around the 100 to 150 mark is when we're really going to see who Timothy Lilgren is. He's not quite there, but I believe he'll get there. Yeah, yeah. And that's not a slight on his game, yeah. what he could be. It's and you just know what? Next what season, now. he'll be, he, you got, you're probably going to bridge him. Mm-hmm. It'll be a cost controlled player that hopefully can fit into your top four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you need, not next year? No. I think next year. Do you think they're going to have a top four with Sandine and Lilgren next year? Oh, you you're putting you're putting Sandine well, top Sandin's four. Sandine's significantly better than him right now. No, like oh, on the right side. That's right. They're playing him right side. Um, I think he'll push. I think he'll look a lot better overall. I have doubts that the Leafs envision a decor 
for the long term with Riley, Sandine, and Lilgren on it. I, that's just my like little hypothesis. Okay. Interesting. I think, I mean, if you want to keep the cap down, It'll be something you have to. I agree. You know, I'm just. You might I just, be forced into. Even just the Labushkin move, right? I know mm-hmm. it's early, but. And now they're talking about getting another guy like that. Yeah. So what does that say about the type of defenseman that they're looking to bring in? I'm not saying I agree or disagree. I don't, I don't think you necessarily need four big, long guys on your decor to no. win. It's been effective for teams. I, just because Montreal did it and made the final doesn't mean every team should copy. That's terrible. Yeah, no, you don't. Correlation causation doesn't make sense there, but yeah. I'm just hypothesizing, right? Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, uh, he's not the biggest guy. Yeah. Also, before you go, the other thing is like, I think Sandine has just been playing so well. It may be a, mm-hmm. an yeah, example of comparing. Ever since that New York game for Sandine, he's played really, really well. He's mm-hmm. been more physical, too, which I like to see. When he's, I think you said it. When he was playing with Labushkin, it was almost like. Yeah. Oh, like this guy's throwing body. I'm going to start hitting too. And do he you, still is an do open. Do you feel on the Washington first goal, he kind of lost his man and allowed the deflection? No, I got to remember the goal. Keep, keep, keeps describing it. It was, he, he, the guy came around in front of the net. I believe it was Connor Sherry. Point shot came off. Uh, Mrazek oh, went to reach for yeah. it, tipped underneath it could, his it was, arm. That was a really nice I'll tip. I'll find though. it. That was, I know, I remember the I'll exact goal. It. That was a really nice tip. Again, that's not his game still. It's still not going to be his game, right? Mm-hmm. It's just he's been improving even at his strengths. Like his ability to move the puck has been fantastic. Great yeah. radio. We're going to watch the goal live. No, right talk now. while I. <laughs> Thank you. I felt like he lost the guy right there, but he made up for it. He scored mm-hmm. the game winning goal. Yeah. Right? And he has been moving the puck exceptionally well. If you're able, I'm a little bit scared to put Riley and Sandine together mm-hmm. simply because they don't defend that well like who's going to defend the blue line but here's here's what sheldon keep actually said and i just watched okay. the goal. he does lose him a bit it's a nice play in front yeah he loses him a bit it's you got to get under his stick you got to sting him in front but sheldon keith said oh we like what we're gonna try out here we're gonna try to get riley and sandine on the ice with the matthews line as much as possible in the okay. offensive zone yeah so it might sense. be a pure if you look at the other two pairings you got brody and hall mm-hmm. and dermot and labushkin those are pure defensive pairings yeah so i think there's a good chance that they're gonna really let those two fly and it could be a good interesting test test for the playoffs too i think that'll that's a good chess piece who knows chess I, match I do i don't i didn't agree with Lilgren jumping up necessarily because i thought that was too big of a jump mm-hmm. but i like him playing with the top four like we talked about i wouldn't mind seeing riley with a maybe a labushkin maybe just to see what it looks like i wouldn't mind yeah. seeing even Riley with Justin Hall, just to see what it looks like, you know? Because mm-hmm. TJ Brody, you could put him anywhere. You could probably mm-hmm. play forward and play oh well. This guy's he's, unbelievable. He's unreal. What was was it uh, the Detroit game, the assist that he got? Oh, to Matthews? Yeah. You want to talk about bad net front defending? Oh, t- Watch that call. It was, who was it? Pius Suter just yeah. left the yeah. leading goal scorer in the league. <laughs> In front of the net, wide open. Yeah, that was. I was making fun of that, and then I had to focus on the Leafs just giving up a a myriad of goals. Uh, in terms of defense, are you liking a little bit more of what you're seeing from Justin Hole? Four well, points in two games. Yes, yes, I think you you said to. I missed it though. Six minutes left in the period, you're like the the retrieval. What happened? He's, there? Still, he's still not good at that. Mm-hmm. Like we pointed <laughs> that out. His dump in yeah. retrievals are are not good. When you ret- when you watch a D retrieve a puck like. Morgan Riley does this decently well. So does TJ Brody. You either have to like be physical enough to absorb mm-hmm. a check and bounce off of it, or you have to be deceptive where you like maybe fake backhand and exit on your forehand. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't do either of those things particularly well. Absorb the check and then like put the puck into an area where it's free to your teammate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's also exactly. I don't. He just doesn't do that well. But he did a really good job this game when there was no pressure. He was making great outlet passes. He was jumping into the rush. Showing a little more confidence, which is good. Yeah. The Red J- Jason has been saying he's not as bad as people mm-hmm. think. The, maybe he was right. Like, uh, we, de- we I tend mean, to it, focus it, on it. His plays were like the assists that he got. I found the last, the, the four assists in two games, these weren't like, oh, he got the puck behind the net and just left it for no, whoever. No, no. Mm-hmm. Stretch pass to Nylander on that goal there. Um, from behind the net, the back pass to Michael Bunting in the Detroit game. And then this game, the Washington game, the fake slap pass, uh, the fake slap shot pass over to Sandine completely freezes Vanacek. And then the first assist was His that goal. from... Uh, 
Oh, he scored. Scored. Yes, from in yeah. front of the Which net. Which was really he, smart of him jumping in. There was like yeah. 10 seconds second left, left and he yeah. just... I'm going to show you guys Justin in. Hall's player card this year. Does that look like a player that's playing bad? No, not at all. His underlying numbers have been good, honestly. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen there. It, it, it's Again, he is Justin Hall, though. What you're seeing, like the numbers, I think are, are very different from what you are seeing. However, I think you can be blinded by hate. Yes. In terms of evaluating him, if yes. you're just watching him play, and like again, the reason why I was trying to be like calm down on him because I've seen people say like, send him through waivers, send him to the agent. No, we don't even want ridiculous. him. Like get rid of him. Like that's it's it's like ridiculous. Like I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be breaks. giving those people credence, but um, yeah, like he's not that bad. And he like again, he showed he showed. There's that a he has reason a decent, the numbers are what they are, but there yeah. there's also a reason you're seeing what you are seeing. Yes, like, yes. His, his deficiencies are very clear. He struggles yeah. He tr- struggles making that first pass out of the zone. That's pretty evident. And when we get hemmed up and he, and it, when he's unable to make that pass, we get hemmed up. Oh it often leads to goals. And that's kind of how we've been getting scored on recently when he's yeah. on the ice. But other than that, <laughs> he's the been funny thing good. is, like I've said for the last two guys, Labushkin and, and Nylander, oh, they are what they are. I don't know what the hell That's Justin Hall is. That's the thing. That's yeah. a great what is he? He's not a defensive defenseman. He's not an offensive defenseman. I don't know what the hell he is. Like, fantastic seventh defenseman call him, but like we expected him to be a lot more than that this year, unfortunately. He's been playing well late, yeah. last week, though, it's all. Been, yeah, he's had his moments. He's been, he's been, he's had... A lot of good moments, I should say. I, I More good than bad, it. Yeah, which yeah, is a good exactly. bar. Okay, I'm going to throw you guys an unprompted question. You can take this whatever way you want. Your ideal Leafs decor, realistic too, game one of the playoffs looks like what? Uh, I think for sure Jake Muzzin back. Um, on the left side. Run down one, two, three pairings at 17. I think in order to get the ideal pairings, you need to have Riley Brody separated. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put that out there because like, I don't know, Morgan Riley's playing well enough for him to be on his own. Like TJ Brody being away from Morgan Riley, he's able to set up your ideal minutes eating shutdown pairing. And it looks like they're setting that up right now. Exactly. Whether that be with Muzzin, whether that be with whoever, I feel like him away from Morgan Riley is going to be most effective just who's going to be with Morgan Riley, I think is the massive million dollar question right now. Maybe, maybe this this the jambalaya that we're being served against Buffalo works. Maybe it's terrible and we have to blow it up all again. I don't like it, it I don't think it's gonna be as simple as what we saw last year. That's all I'm gonna put out. I don't think mm-hmm. it's gonna be as simple as Riley Hold Brody Muzz, uh Riley Bro, uh Whoever we saw yeah, last year, you know who Hall, it was. Muzzin, yes. Sandin, Bogosian, this year's Bogosian's Labushka. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So for me, I just wrote it down quickly. Riley Sandin, this isn't like one, two, three, just whatever. Riley Sandin, Muzzin, Labushkin, Brody, Giordano. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, I mean, that like, would be fantastic. Yeah? yeah? I would love if who Giordano. Was with Muzzin? Sh- Labushkin. And where's Hall? You gassed Hall, eh? Yeah. After all that, <laughs> no. I well, like I, Seattle gets I their man. Just, I, I don't. I don't see them like if they made a trade for yeah. Labushkin. Like, do I don't know. I hope the Leafs are holding Justin Hall to have some value too, because I think if teams asking for a roster player, even a bad team, are you, you saying he was a, a showcase? Uh, maybe, <laughs> but tell me, we're just showcasing half our roster. Uh, uh, you could flip is. Justin Hall next year at the deadline for a two, guaranteed. Yes, guaranteed. Probably. If he's playing the way he is now, why not? Like. I think he's an asset. That's why it may help you in a trade. Who knows? But yeah. that'd be fantastic. I don't know. I like, obviously don't disagree with that. Yeah. I just really hope they strong arm Justin Hole. I'm sorry. They strong arm uh, G- Giordano strong arm Seattle into being like, I will be traded to these two teams. And then Seattle has no leverage and they don't get that much out of it. Perfect. Also, I want to dispel. Oh. I heard this rumor going around that Mark Giordano's not playing well this year. I, I disagree with that. I yeah. think the team has been not good. I, I think, think the goaltending has been not good. I think their yeah. defense have been solid enough, though. I don't think they've been yeah. a tire fire defensively that people say. And I have a little stat on that for later, and I'll show you. But okay. I would have no hesitancy. Essentially, what I'm saying is trading for Mark Giordano. Yeah, no. So. Not we'll see. That's it's gonna be. 
it's gonna be a fun. fascinating case study on you know what does this front office believe because I still hear them around Ben Sherratt. I still hear those that connection. Really? I hear it. I've heard it. Wow. It does, I don't think it's necessarily true. I think they've done a good job of you know kind of mm-hmm. getting a guy who does a lot of those things. But yeah, maybe they want a guy playing top four. I don't know. This is going to be so fascinating down the mm-hmm. stretch here. Yeah. Just the one thing also about uh, I, that I've found about the leases, they've kind of also been very hush hush about like when they make deals and stuff. Because the Labushkin trade came out of like literally nowhere. Friedman said it on like at the intermission. Also, right? you know before. what tipped him yeah. off? He was scratched in the game. It was not yeah. like he had no, a someone. Scoop. Someone pointed it out to him and said, like, if Labushkin is scratched in this game, watch out. Exactly. Yeah. And so then he was, and it was like, oh, yeah, I got something here. No, I think they're very tight lipped. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. Um, it's going to be, uh, it's the, ev- all I hear every day on the radios, is it forward or D? Is it forward or D? Why not, why not both? Yeah, why, why not, not both? both? To quote like, Kawhi Leonard, why not both? Is and then the we haven't even talked about the the real topic of conversation here. <laughs> the goaltending? The goaltending. Where would that rank, the Detroit game in terms of goaltending? That was the worst goaltended game I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three goalie pulls yeah. in one game. We saw all four goalies play. I have i don't know if I've ever seen that before. A 10-7 game. It was a lot of fun. It and was. it was quite it interesting was. because it, like the NHL's big marquee national broadcast in the U.S. event that went on took a backseat to the Toronto Maple Leafs playing the Detroit Red Wings who are not in a playoff spot. <laughs> like, oh my God. But the funny thing is, I think they just accept that, like, when they put these, this is a little off topic, these outdoor games on, they just accept that it's not for Canada, right? Yeah. Like, pretty no, much. no Leafs fan is watching, I don't care what outdoor game it is. Yeah. It could be, it could be Tampa, Florida. It yeah. could be Why Tampa, Why would you Colorado. waste marketing dollars on Canada if, like, They're all the, the Canadian Leafs. teams are going to be playing on that, in that Correct. time slot? But, oh, also, if you don't, if you didn't like that game, like, relax. <laughs> no, actually, relax. Like, sure, was it a playoff style? No, no, not at all. Was it still fun? Yes. 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 Was it stressful? Yes. Okay. It was stressful. I get it. If you're a Leafs fan, but oh yeah, my God, our goalies, especially are... if you had the puck line. Oh wow. That is a roller coaster. Yes. But let's talk Jack Campbell. It's uh, his safe percent. I mean, Matt Murray kind of got lit up tonight, but someone pointed out to me going into tonight's game, Matt Murray had an overall like season long save percentage that was higher than Jack Campbell. He was at 920. Jack Campbell is currently at 917. Mm-hmm. We've started to bring this up over the last couple of weeks. Of like, okay, like his save percentage since this day has been bad. Since th- It's just now it's very obvious to everyone that he's been bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is, this is maybe a galaxy brain thing of me to say, but you remember we talked about when he'd play well and they'd lose like 2-1. Yeah. And he'd say, it's on me. I should have stopped all those. He yeah. is holding himself to such an unrealistic standard there mm-hmm. that when he actually does play like crap that he has, you can see it. He's looking to the Scott, to the stars for help mm-hmm. after every goal. He's his body his language hang, isn't yeah, good. He, it's terrible. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. It's and horrible. The thing is, Jack Campbell has played well in stretches, but we, we talk about this all the time. Goaltending is so hard to mm-hmm. predict. Even the b- carry price. Sergei Bobrovsky, they all go through up and down stretches. He's never experienced that because he's never been a starter. He's never been asked to play. Mm-hmm. So there's two ways I want to take this. One, he's got to learn how to do that if he wants to be a starter. Oh, yeah. But two, I think we got to give him a chance still. I, I, like, I, it's not, I'm not ready to give up on him yet. Yeah. Show, let him show that he can bounce back. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's not, the year's not over yet, obviously. But it, it's gotten a little ugly. You know what? This is why we got Peter Mrazek. Exactly. But Peter Mrazek's also not playing that well. But it's to be, just frustrating. To be fair, he's been, been okay. okay. Like Washington. I, 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 I'm going to throw out the Detroit game because, like, imagine how hard that is coming in. Like, yeah. he, it's, it's, third not, pe- it's very, very up and down as a goaltender yeah. either. It goes, it goes one way or the other. Yeah. And you can't control it because you have been doing no activity mm-hmm. for several hours in a row 
and then you are just tossed into an NHL game. Also, Go men- get him, champ. Also, mentally, like the start of the third period, that that thought never You're crossed not, Peter Mrazek's no, mind, like at all. at all. And then all of a usually, sudden, five yeah. minutes later, usually you're when you in. pull a goaltender, like when you look at when they pulled uh, Nedeljkovic for the first time, and then they, when they pulled Grice that other time, like they gave them the intermission to get ready, get, get in the right mindset. On top of that, when Washington then pulled Samsonov, they gave Vanacek a period to get ready, right? Or the intermission to get ready, which the Leafs have gotten three goalie pulls in the last two games. That's pretty impressive offensively. Yeah, Just want crazy. to throw that out there. Uh, three but, two games. Yeah. Peter Mrazek in a 7-2 game then gets thrown into five minutes into the period. Like, I do understand, like, he was probably starting to get ready after the fourth goal, where it's like, okay, like, one more and I'm probably in. And then that fifth goal was just so dog shit that it was like, okay, I, I'm in. So, yeah, he probably wasn't the most ready. And then I think the first shot on goal went in. It was a tip. That's never fun. Um, I don't like how they the goalie just goes in and they don't get any warm-up shots. I know it would look ridiculous, but mm-hmm. just as a goalie, that, that would help me out so much. <laughs> but whatever, this isn't a goalie league. But, like... I don't know. I didn't think Mrazek was that bad against Washington. Like, the first goal is a tip. The second goal is a slap pass. The third goal is a two-on-one. Yeah. Yeah, but it's also, again, this is too hard on goalies. I understand. But when you need a save, you need a save. That's how it's going to be in the playoffs, right? He has an 895 save percentage. He has had – he's getting an opportunity now. But, like, he – how Campbell's playing the last two months, he should be the starter right now, unquestioned. If he was playing even half decent, he'd be the starter. He earned one game. And he started. He played what do you well think, against the Wild. What do you guys yeah. think of him starting tomorrow against Buffalo? I think that's the right I like, thing. To I like do. it. That's hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. I think they were going to like if they were playing against Buffalo on Saturday, I think Peter Mrazek would have played. They did that stupid oh, Jack Campbell used to play minor hockey in Detroit. Let's give him this start. Like it's his first start in Detroit ever or something. May, might have been. And so that's why they let him start that one. But like, it's like because so Mike Babcock did that thing to Jason Spezza, mm-hmm. we were like trying to make up for every yeah, single. Yeah. But also, like, you don't have to do that. Yeah. In that, there's some situations where you should do right by players, but I don't know. Well, Instead, speak, he just got. You mentioned the name. I just got to say it. Ben Stein pointed out uh, Mike Babcock's uh, U Sports team got knocked out in the first round, and they blew a lead. Oh wow, well, that's a shame. That's a shame. <laughs> that's, that's a shame. <laughs> um. Anyways, if Mike Backhoff was the coach, guaranteed Ben Shaw is on the list right now. Hundred percent. Ew. Anyways, anyway, Ben Shaw's um, not that that bad, but I think the price is just no, way like for beyond. a first and Robertson. And yeah, Lilgren it's way and, beyond what it should be, I believe. But so, yeah. To get into it a little bit more, let's see how Peter Mrazek plays against Buffalo. Mm-hmm. I hope he doesn't lay an egg. I hope it's solid, and then you give him another game. Yeah. So, it, so the, the Leafs schedule right now is Sabres for this next upcoming week. Sabres Wednesday, Canucks Saturday. Then they have a back-to-back Columbus, Seattle. Jack Campbell's probably going to play one of those back-to-backs for 100%. sure. For yeah. sure. And if I think, like you said, if Mrazek has a good game against the Sabres, he should be in net against the Canucks. I think that'd be like a good, good 100%. course of action. Yeah. He should be yeah. 100%. I hope he... That's why. Let's let's go Petey. Like, this yeah. is why we paid you three three point eight over 3. Yeah, let's go. Let's see it now, buddy. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. Not like everything you guys said is a hundred percent right. I hope, but I do think the in terms of variance, which goal is better, top end is still Jack Campbell. So a part of me hopes yeah. he can, you know, figure it out. Down We've the seen a stretch out of Jack Campbell that we haven't seen a, out of Peter Mrazek in like eight years. So yeah. like, I just don't think yeah. it's there anymore. Um, but like against the Red Wings, like that was just like he he let in. He let in five. I think like four of them are his fault. Just yeah. totally his. One of them, he just. So on the second goal, Detroit dumped it in like three times in a row. He played the puck beautifully. Looked on the forehand, sent it backhand. Puck ended up out of the zone. It was, I believe, three times in a row. The fourth time, he had the backhand open. He panicked on the forehand. Some guy came. They, he had the pressure. And then he tried to go glassing out. He fanned on it and just went tape to tape to the def- like to the forward there. Mm-hmm. That was just that was a tough look. <laughs> yeah, and you could tell right afterwards yeah. the way his body language and everything. Yeah. yeah, first goal was a bad rebound. Third one was a high tip. It went through him. He could have had that uh, one. I, I don't even know. Like it was barely tipped. Like, yeah, I, I I don't think it was. Like I could have stopped that. 
Yeah. It, it, he, he tracked it well. He tracked it. And he it went, just went right that. through. Yeah. But if it's in your body, I feel yeah. like you have to be able to tuck, right? He yeah. should have. Yeah. He should have. And the goal from fourth the goal one, line, I don't even know what that is. The fourth yeah. one was a big tip from Carter Rowney. You'll give him that one. Like, that's, okay, you got to help him out there. The fifth one was just so bad. Mm-hmm. Like, just inexcusably bad. I, 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 can't, I have no words for it. Like, so when you say worst goaltending performance you've ever seen. Overall, I'm not just saying him. I'm saying in the game. In the overall. game, yeah. yeah. You know, know, like from all four it's like, goalies. It's one of the worst Leafs performances I've seen in oh, the past yeah. few years. Yep, I agree. Like, we talked about it. There was one game yeah. Michael Hutchinson played against the Rangers that literally oh. sparked the Jack, sparked Campbell, Jack Campbell being traded for an hour after the game. He I was, think Hutchinson played better in that game than he probably what, did. what Campbell did in this one. Uh, there was a David Riddick game last year that was just, I think, blatantly one of the worst performances I've ever seen. And then an Anderson performance here and there. I think against Calgary, one against Chicago, where, yeah. But this was this was for the record books, brother. It was terrible. Yeah. But Th- this is why, like during our playoffs, if you guys listened last year, I said Vasilevsky is like the best already the best goalie of this generation because he's so remarkably consistent too. His worst save percentage in any of his six years as the primary starter is nine seventeen. That is his low end. Like think about that. That's it's disgusting. He, he you can't underestimate but it. And, Move over. Is there a new? Shest is there king? a new king in town? Right now there is. There is. He's. I have a good stat for that. If we want to, do you want to have a little wrap up on the goalies, or is that? Uh, I think, I think we, yes, I don't think the Leafs are going to be looking to trade for a goalie no. unless something drastic, like unless their goalies goaltending somehow gets worse from now until the trade. Unless I shit the bed, like completely just shit the bed four games in a row, where it's like, can either of you do something? That's when okay. Like maybe they make a move. I, as of right now, though, I don't. I think it's it's gonna be Petey's crease until further notice. There. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Right. So went through the goaltending. It's been terrible. Hopefully, it continues to roll. I like what I've seen from Peter Mrazek's last, last two starts. First one against the Wild, solid. Against the Capitals, okay. I'll give him a. I'll give him a C plus. That's fair. A C plus on that one. You you want better goaltending in the playoffs, I understand, but That's fair. It was fair. It was whatever. Yeah. Right? So let's get into our biggest stat surfing yet. Yeah? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Who wants to start? You want me to start? Let's see it. Okay. I want you guys to start. Mine's pretty bananas. Okay. Ooh. Mine mine goes off the Seattle Kraken narrative because okay. Ooh. They've messed up the expansion app, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I understand that perspective. I still think they have a lot of good players. They have a lot of flexibility. Right now, according to Evolving Wild, they're in the top 10 in expected goals against in terms of preventing. Oh, look, you're shocked. Oh, I thought their D suck. I thought Mark Giordano sucks. No. They have a better expected goals percentage, the Seattle Kraken, than the New York Rangers this year. How many more points do the New York Rangers have than the Seattle Kraken? Someone tell, like, like 25. I think it might be more. It might be like th- huh. 30 points. I don't know. It's crazy. I'll look, I'll look it up. That shows Igor. you how unbelievable Igor Shesterkin's been. Igor Shesterkin right now has a 941 save percentage. He's played a significant 35-game sample size. That in itself can be a stat surfing. But I just want to reiterate the goalie situation, right? They signed Grubauer. They're thinking, oh, he's going to be our solid starter. We don't have to worry about it. I know we drafted three goalies, but we're going to sign Grubauer. That was their worst mistake, by the way. Okay, so the difference in points between the Rangers and the Kraken, 71 compared to 37. What? (laughs) The Kraken have 37 points this year. But here's the difference. It's not as simple as this, but as a team, Seattle is getting 887 goaltending this year. Igor Shesterkin has a 941 save percentage. His save percentage is 0. 0.5, 0. 0.05 better. Like that's I've never seen anything like that. 940 versus 880. That's unbelievable the difference. Yeah. And a lot of people are touting New York as like, oh, you know, that'd be a tough team to play. I think New York is massively overrated and they're being carried by one of the best goaltending performances we've ever seen straight up. Price, Theodore, Hasek. Like that's how good this is right now. Mm-hmm. I just I, I think he deserves props, and I just want to reiterate: Seattle can't score. I, they don't generate a lot of offense, but defensively, when because what if Adam Larson becomes available for Seattle? He's signed. He's extended to a. He's got s- term. Decent contract. He's a good player. Right? I'm just saying, like, don't. I know they're not good. I know the narrative is they messed up the expansion draft. They definitely didn't do a spectacular job. 
But I still think their D are really solid. Mm -hmm. And I think Mark Giordano is also really solid. That's all I want to say. Okay. I like my main it. stat surfing is like how do they yeah. have a better expected goals percentage? I like Jamie range? Alexiak too on their D there. Vince, Vince Dunn, Dunn is, is not a bad player as well. He's a pretty good player as well. People love Carson uh Carson Susie. Susie. He's a good third pairing big guy, hard shot, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, so Seattle Kraken have just stunk this year. Rangers do have seventeen more goals in them this year. I don't know how many games played with the differences, but that's quite an interesting one. Yeah. I was watching a little Shesterkin on Saturday against uh, the Penguins there. This guy, it looks like he's playing a league below him. Just the way he's positioned and how quick he is. And then, as I've mentioned before, Kevin Woodley did a great job outlining this on several podcasts. When he's on his knees, just he looks like a hovercraft, how well he's able to uh, like just transfer his weight in the butterfly there and just push across and make saves that way, right? It's funny because I think his two like worst games of the year both came against Calgary. <laughs> so Calgary fans probably don't have the highest regard for him, but and also on top of that his contract is looking good. Oh, primo. Man, absolutely primo. Yeah. So. And just a little tangent on that as well, just more about the Seattle. Like part of the reason why they're obviously not doing so well in the standings is cuz like you said like their goaltending is so has been subpar this year. Their goaltending's been I think it's eight. They're averaging like around 880, 890. And that's tough. That's tough to win when you have a goalie doing that. But guess what? The Leafs have had a goalie doing that for almost the, since the start of January. And they've been on a six, it's like a 0. 0.6, like, like 60% point pace. Mm -hmm. what, you guys know what I'm trying Point yeah. percentage in that stretch. What were they saying on the broadcast? They were saying how Jack Campbell is like 10, four and one in the last two months, despite yeah. having an 890 save percentage. Yes. And they somehow made it's that lower than eight ninety. And they somehow made that like an indictment against the Leafs. It's like, no, they're playing so unbelievably well in front of them. In that case, like I'm mm -hmm. sorry. How for, funny is it? We mentioned last broad uh, last episode on the broadcast. They mentioned it. That's how I got it. Uh, that his rebound control was has been spectacular. First goal against Detroit, <laughs> just the juiciest, fattest rebound. And then the rest of them, he didn't have to worry about rebound control because he just straight up didn't stop the puck. So I, I think a back, frustrating. back to Seattle, yeah. like you said, the, first of all, the goaltending is killing them. I thought it was stupid to sign Grubauer after you drafted Dreger, Decord, Van and Vanacek. That was, I don't yeah. understand why they did that. But they're playing exactly how they, the, the team they mm -hmm. drafted to play. Yeah. They're a low event, suppressing shots, not that good offensively because yeah. their idea was, okay, hey, we're not going to take any big forwards. We're going to sign our own forwards. We're going to sign um, Alex Schwartz. Wenberg. We're going to sign... Jaden Schwartz. The problem is a lot of those guys have a been injured or b just kind of disappointing this year. Yeah. Brandon Tenov, another guy who played really well for them, got injured. Jared McCann was playing well; he got injured. Like they've had injuries up front. Mm -hmm. That's their big issue right now. Jaden Schwartz played twenty nine games. Brandon Tanev was Tan the best forward. He tore his ACL. Tanev played thirty games. Jared McCann's missed five games. Yanni Gord wasn't playing to start the season. So mm -hmm. all I'm gonna say is this: I don't think they rocked the expansion draft by any stretch of the imagination they could have extracted more picks but yeah this is their plan though they're they're still on plan they have cap space mm -hmm. they have all their picks let's just see what happens I like very that. good point nine million cap space they can weaponize yeah absolutely very well by very retaining very well. uh mark Trudeau. <laughs> <laughs> going back to the expansion draft just like just all-time bad take we were like i i, I was like who is tanner Janot? i know they knew. Hmm. Well, they that's, knew something we that's, didn't. You know what? That's an example of there's some things that we don't just don't know. Yeah. Like they traded Victor Arvidsson for a second and a third, which is kind of low for a pretty good player there. Low. And then so that they could protect this guy, Tanner Janot, that we clearly did not watch enough of. And then this year, they love. They absolutely love Tanner Janot. He's just so Southern hockey. He fights and he scores. He's like their bunting guy. Yeah, essentially. Except he chuck he chucks knucks. He's a little bigger bit. and more physical. Yeah. Not, yeah. I would say not as like skilled as a bunting, yeah. but he's a so. great player, and that's an example of development. They knew what they had. They've had this guy from what you know. They seen him develop from a guy who had one goal in the mm -hmm. WHL in fifty two games. Oh, they wow, end, they event, you didn't know that his, his I don't know. If, I think it was his draft year. He had one goal in fifty two games. 
Then what they ended the up hell? signing him. E- ECHL, <laughs> AHL. That's just good organizational yeah. development. He was in the ECHL last year. That's also, crazy. there is something yeah. about yeah. sometimes I do believe these bigger guys just take. You well, said it. Mason March. When man. you adjust from level to level. Oh yeah, yeah. It can be harder for the bigger guys, mm-hmm. right? Look, like Mason Marchman. Mm-hmm. That's a great like, example. Tanner yeah. Janot. Like it's just because thing, you're yeah. bigger, you're not going to be able to adjust to the next level better. It's like, oh, you're bigger, the other guys will be bigger, so you'll adjust well. No, you have to adjust from playing against smaller guys to then bigger guys, yeah. right? There's there's a learning curve there. Yeah. So that's a good um, point. I just want to segue because like Tanner Janot does have some 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 stuff to do with uh, my stat. So I'm just going to get going on my stat right now. And also, it, one last... Oh, go ahead, never go mind ahead. this playoffs. Uh, it might be the same for regular season. Damn it. I screwed myself up here. Oh, his ozone start percentage, 36.3%. Who's this? Janot. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. Good I wouldn't him. have expected that. Go on, Jason. So yeah, I was listening to the radio uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they were talking about the the rookie scoring race, saying, "Oh, don't sleep on Tanner Jano, don't sleep on this guy." No, how about let's not sleep on um, Mr. Michael Bunting, okay? Because he Do is you think having people are sleeping on him. I think absolutely people are ha- are sleeping on him. I because think it's split. I think it's split between people are going r- crazy about him, and then the other half is not. I just want to say that what he is doing right now and what he's on pace for at five on five is almost unprecedented for a rookie. And I know he's 26 years old, 20, however old he is. He's a lot older. But you know what? Let's let's look at the stats quickly, okay? So just this year alone, looking at the rookie scoring, okay? And we're, we're going to do five on five because, again, Michael Bunting doesn't play a lot of power plays. For some of these guys, they almost have double, triple the amount of power play time that Michael Bunting has, okay? So starting off with Michael Bunting at five on five, he leads the league in rookies with 37 five-on-five five points in 53 games. The next highest is Trevor Zegris with 27, okay? Now, let's take away rookies for the sec- for a second, okay? Michael Bunting is tied for eighth, eighth in the NHL with the most, uh, eighth most five-on-five five points. Eighth in the NHL, not against rookies in the NHL. The only, uh, the only seven players with more points, Johnny Goudreau, Austin Matthews, Jonathan Huberto, Dylan Larkin, Kirill Kaprizov, Matthew Tuchuk, Nazem Kadri. He's tied with Alex Ovechkin and Timo Meyer. He has more five-on-five points than Leon Dreisaitl, Connor McDavid, Mitchell, Mitch Marner, Mikko Rantanen, Jordan Cairo. The list goes on and well, on. He has more. You can't say, like Mitch five, Marner. It's because he missed ten games. I, I know. I'm just. And he's I, the reason he has all those five. I, on five I know. Points. I'm just. I'm just. I was just going through the list there. Okay. So that's just for this year alone. Okay. And I. I know people are saying, okay, he's old. How, let's compare him to other seasons, okay? Let's compare uh, Michael Bunting's season so far, only 55 games in, to other other rookies scoring at 5-on-5, five five, okay? NHL.com has a help, helpful tool where you can sort by rookies and only in their rookie year, okay? So this is just with, with, within their rookie year. Uh, Michael Bunting is 17th right now of all rookies since 2009-2010 when they started keeping 5-on-5 five five stats for the NHL. He is 17th with almost 20 to 30 less games played than every other player on this list. He is one spot below Mitch Marner. He's also only averaging 13 minutes of, of ice time at 5-on-5, five five, which is a lo- which is about a minute or two lower than most of these guys have. His points per 60 compared to rookies of s- since 2009-2010 at 5-on-5, five five, which is when they started keeping these stats, is 3.0 points per 60 at 5-on-5. Five five. The next highest was Jake Gensel with 2.89, Brendan Gallagher with 2.88, Matthew Barzell with 2.87. So I just want to say that do not sleep on Michael Bunting. And if you're voting, just consider this man because mm-hmm. Artemi Panarin won when he was an overager. How did you just pronounce his name? Artemi Panarin? Panarin? Artemi Panarin. There you go. The bread man, whatever. So I, I just want to say that like, Give this guy right. some credit. We've lo- we love what Jason Robertson did last year. Guess what? Michael Bunting is doing it better. He's doing it better, right? Yeah. Like, and Jason Robertson got got a lot of Calder votes, rightfully so. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kirill Kaprizov had a fantastic le- year last year. Michael Bunting has more five on five points and almost more points than what Kirill Kaprizov had last year. Wow. In his rookie season, right. so I just want to say, put some respect on my man's name. All right. That was a, that was a. <laughs> 
Thank the you for coming ranch. to my TED talk. Should we play some devil's advocate, Joe, on this or what? I mean, yeah, I, go ahead. Go it's ahead. easy to be like yeah. Leafs. Like everyone's going to say we're Leafs, Leafs spies, homers. Whatever. But. I mean, Mort Sider just got his 40th point tonight. <laughs> but I As think half, half of those are on the oh, – more than half of those are on the power play. Uh, Which it's – he has 16 even strength points. I don't he, know about how he's 21. a defenseman. I know. And he I'm plays just... 23 minutes a night. He like Moritz Sider is like he's holding his own in, on a bad team. One of the best defensive rookie seasons of all time. Right. So I think that's going to play a lot into it. But I hope I put I a couple dollars on him. I'm not going to lie. If Bunting scores 30 goals and 70 points, then like wow. Then you got a debate. But the other thing is like I think the main comparison should be to Panarin because Panarin. Won the rookie of the year at 24. Yeah. I think people who. He won it at 24. Everyone called him old. Bunting's almost 27. 27. <laughs> like that, again, it's not fair to compare him to uh, even a Jason Robertson because. Yeah. Like Bunting also played a lot in the NHL already. <laughs> he he did. Like, this is the weirdest rookie season ever. It's also and the that's, best. people are going to play that against him, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But Jason's right. If he's eligible for the award, all these stats matter. But yeah, you should. I look be. at like he's playing with right now the two best players in the league over the last two months. Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner have been the two best players in the league. Yeah. So someone might come up to you and say, "What are his stats when he's not playing with those guys?" Uh, not that. That's that's a tough one. I don't know. That's the not great. But he's right? but he's playing the fourth line when he's not with those guys, right? That's why I also forgot to add that in there. He played like fourth yeah, line true. for like 15 games. So who do you yeah. think was a better player in their rookie year? So, but Pan, yeah, Panarin or Bunting. But didn't Panarin also play with some guy named Patrick? Kane? I agree. Who, so who was a yes. better player in their rookie year? Panarin or Bunting? You could, you, could, you could say Bunting. Mm, no, he wasn't. How many five on five points did Artemi Panarin have? I'm just Panarin telling you. I'm just, put I'm just, up 53. I watch every game of Michael Bunting, points. and I remember watching Artemi Panarin be a much more dynamic play driver, a dyna more dynamic player in transition, a more skilled player, a better shooter. He was so fun to watch. Oh, my God. Also, I think the other thing you have to consider is, like, I don't think it's necessarily fair to punish guys who play on the power play, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I get that Bunting doesn't play on the power play, but he's essentially playing on the power play when he plays with Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner at 5-on-5. Five five. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the other argument. But yeah. I will say, I definitely think he should be in the top three right yeah, now. I think that's three, guaranteed. Sure. Those are just my devil's advocate points. Yeah. But I think you make a lot of good points. I think, again, he does a good job of mm -hmm. playing his role. And then also he does a good job of getting out of the way when he needs to get out of the way. Yeah, the, exactly. So the main point of my whole thing was just to say how, like, in, like I understand that he's playing with Marner. I understand that he's playing with yeah, Matthews. He's and those having guys one are, of the best rookie seasons of all time. And like, at, not according to the numbers you threw at out there. at five on five, he's like yeah. literally a, a, a force to be reckoned with. That with with those guys at five on five, it's one amazing. of the it's best rookies ever to then be one year away from ownership. <laughs> <the agency. laughs> That's so wild. That's definitely playing against them, though. Yeah, I think a yeah. lot of people are going to take his age, of into, course, of course, into account. Um, I'm hoping we can sway some voters towards Mort Sider. I'm more invested in, in Matthews winning the heart than Bunting yes. winning the Calder. Yeah, for sure. I because he deserves one. it. And we, we, we talked about like the, the Selkie thing. If, like, if you're going to talk about a trophy with Matthews, it's the heart, not the Selkie. Yeah, right? like, the heart like, and the rocket, the, baby. For, I'm going to tell you right now, you can rewind three months in June when I say this. Bergeron's going to win the Selkie this year. Yeah, he should. Or David Kahn. He deserves it, I would say. Kahn's going to get Selkie He votes. should. I, we gotta I mean, somehow who, we gotta somehow give get him some fifth place yeah. votes. Conf is like the, the what the Selkie was kind of made intended for. for. Yeah, I mean last year who's that guy? Uh, Glenn Denning got Glenn some Denning, yeah. votes. Yeah, that's terrible. I mean, is Conf better than Glenn Denning by two oh, country yeah. miles defensively? But last year they did use more metrics because I remember um, the Minnesota guys. Erickson Eck was in yeah. there. Marcus, yeah. Fli those guys were legitimately good defensive. Mm -hmm metric players and i don't think those guys normally would have gotten votes i don't know yeah, because everyone just sort by plus minus correct <laughs> <laughs> right so it's like hopefully people are using metrics because it's like you're not watching uh you're not watching erickson eck every game so one might as well check out what what are the impacts looking like right for sure so, and that's a responsible way to do it exactly. the other guy who i think is going to get it one of these years is anthony sorelli i think he has a good shot this year as well yeah, this year? Oh, yeah. Okay. I wouldn't doubt it at all. He's uh, 
He's a very good second oh, line he, center. Oh, he's to say the least. He's fantastic. Honestly, he's like he's one of the swings in Tampa's trajectory. Getting him, honestly, was mm-hmm. yeah. just unbelievable how good he is. Yeah, and costed them uh, a third round pick. <laughs> it's good drafting, good development. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, I wanted to get into my stat. Let's hear it. Uh, this better be five. fantastic, by the way. You five on five total assists. Do you know who leads the league? Like, who are five. the top five? Primary or total assists? Total assists. Five. Well, it's not McDavid because Jason just torched him <laughs> at five on five. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, th- I, I think I'm you got to know the answer to this. You just looked at the top player. No, no I, I didn't. Well, actually, so who's in first, second, and then the three that are tied for Oh, third. I okay. This is kind of spoilery because you made me look. Some of them are defensemen. Uh, I looked at some... Uh, Oh, that might be something else. No, that's something else. Okay, okay. It's something else. Okay, so it's I... Not I, defenseman. Five I, on five. I know who's tied for third. I'm going to guess Johnny Gaudreau and Jonathan Hubert are probably one and two, One and maybe? two, yep. Is okay. Marner in there? Are you throwing no. Marner? How close is he? Marner is two off. Oh, like he's the next guy on the list. He's... Yeah, he's tied for... It would be sixth with Kaprizov. With how many less games? Ten. Uh... Five less than Kaprizov, seven less than Kachuk. Oh, okay, those are the guys he's tied with. Yeah. You're not going to give me a spoiler alert. So, no. okay, Morgan I, I, Riley. No, which he is in tenth, which is freaking fantastic. That was my part. There's got to be a leaf in here. There is. Oh, there I is. know. I know who it is. We talked about it. It's Kerfoot. Yeah, Alex Kerfoot yeah. is tied for third wow. in the league. In five-on-five five assists. But the other thing I remember is, like, I don't want to rain on the Kerfoot parade, but a lot of pro, uh, secondaries in there, no? Uh, yeah. For Alex Kerfoot, yes. yeah. But not that it matters. Like, playing with Nylander and Tavares, mm-hmm. a secondary assist is still very valuable in yeah, terms of you get we know how they transition the puck, and that's a lot. he's helped a lot with that. Mm-hmm. That's so fantastic. Tied for third is Nazem Kadri oh. with 25. Uh, he has 18 primaries. Uh, Timu Meyer with 25. He has 12 primaries. And then Alex Kerfoot has 11. That's not, uh, yeah, Kerfoot's not like, yeah. It's not that crazy. Yeah, good yeah, for him. Good for him. He's, I mean, that's why when uh, I, we talked earlier today, it's like Connor Garland's a really good player. I He's been a good player for mm-hmm. a couple of years now. He Solid. makes 5 million, though. And is he, he's better than Kerfoot, I think, as a player. He's but a like, better scorer. Kerfoot's been playing really well mm-hmm. in the second line. And I know we want an I upgrade. I, I don't want this guy off our team. I want him. I want him when we need him. He's keep, bringing something. Keep him use. Keep using him on the PK. Keep using him even if he's on the fourth line. I think yeah. he can bring a lot to a fourth line, mm-hmm. especially if you can you can keep him under the cap. Right. I get if he's the cap guy, but wow, that's crazy. He's so he's fourth. You said in the league. Tied for third. Wow. Tied for third with our s- beloved sweet prince Nazem Kadri. Nazem Kadri. And I bet he's playing a bit less than those, some of the other guys. Oh yeah. Too. Yeah. Uh, per same, game, yeah. I, I bet he is. Yeah. As well. Um. My other thing, uh, five on five goals. So number one, obviously, obviously oh, I thought uh, it wasn't Matt. Was for, I thought Forsberg was someone else was there. That no, I, I think it's per no. sixty. Forsberg oh. is like because he has yeah. like he's he missed a bunch of games. Mm-hmm. He has like five hundred minutes and he's yeah. like crazy amount of. So I'll, I'll spoil it. So number two is Kyle Connor with twenty. Wow. Nasty goal scorer. Uh, number three is Philip Forsberg. Yeah. He has nineteen. He has thirteen games less played than Kyle Connor. No, he's crazy good this year. Let me guess them. Let, let me guess them. All right, so I'm going up to number six. Okay, is what I want you. To, so number three, I said was Forsberg. Number four, who? It's got to be a guy. Who's, oh, Alex DeBrincat. Uh, no, it's five on five. Oh, okay. How many goals did Forsberg have? Nineteen. Line A missed games, but he's been so high. Mm-hmm. But it's not him. Can I give a hint for number five? You're you looking at it? I saw I saw I had it up. Oh, I wanted to guess. Okay, the so game. can I give uh, you a hint? Leon Dreisaitl. No. He's he's probably the front runner for the Cy Young. Goals to assist? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's uh Chris Kreider. No. How no. is Chris Kreider not the front runner okay, for the sorry, Cy Young? Okay, sorry. I at five on five. Unless I'm doing something with these numbers, no. Chris Kreider's thirty four goals and fourteen assists. Yeah, so okay, I, but he does I'm, have I'm, a lot look, of power I'm looking at five on yeah, five. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Um this is tough. Is is he's Italian. Manjapani. There you go. That's one. He's tied with He's tied with a certain individual, Dylan Larkin. He's Having playing. a great year. Having a great year not playing with too, too much there in Detroit. Number six. Kaprizov. No. Uh, he's eight. Okay. 
Is, are you going to tell me? It's Michael Bunting. Yeah, I knew that's. I knew it was getting there. You guys set me up. Time with like Jordan Cairo with 17, I, five was, on five that, goals. That was disingenuous what you guys just set me up to look like an idiot. It's like you just told me the answer five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, is it Kaprizov? Is it Patrick Lyonet? Woo. Um, yeah, some interesting names on this list. Boone Jenner having a bounce back year after... Didn't we call his contract like one of the worst in the league? Yeah, but the problem is he's like their number like one 30%. offensive player and they're one of the yeah. worst offensive teams in the league. So, yeah, makes sense there. But those were, I believe, all of my... I, I, I don't know. The stat I sent you, I can't even remember. It was something it crazy. Was, was it oh, individual expected goals? It might have been goals? power play. Oh. No, it was like of the lead, lead leaders in assists, like a significant portion of the top 10 are defensemen. Somehow defensemen. Mm-hmm. I'll Not find five it. on five, but just all situations. Yeah. Yeah, I'll find sense. it. was on Hockey Reference. I remember looking at it. Um, did you have one? I have I have like a little extra bonus one. All right. I just did like a little. I was just looking at the natural stat trick five on five numbers, and I just did a little sort by individual expected goals. There's three Leafs in the top six for individual expected goals. Bunting, Tavares, Matthews. Yes. Wow. That's kind of crazy. Redemption. That's like, yeah. Eh, I don't know what to make of it. Oh, and okay. John Tavares is shooting 8% this year. Whoa. Yeah. No, overall, he's shooting 8%. All right, five on five. This is all five on five. Well, okay, well you got to qualify that because, again, John Tavares on the power play has been shooting pretty good, I would yeah. assume. Yeah. Yeah. So Sorry. power play assists, the top 10, the defenseman in there. Adam Fox is tied for first in the league in power play assists. Quinn Hughes is number five. He's tied for third in the league. Chris Letang is seventh in the league. Victor tied with Victor Hedman and Kale McCarr. That's yeah, all top ten. There's four defensemen in the top ten in the league in assists in all situations right now. Wow. And that n- and none of them are Kale McCarr. Oh, that's what I sent you. That's what that. Yeah. <laughs> there it's, we go. It's Yossi, Hedman, Latang, and Fox, and none of the yeah none of them are Kale McCarr. It's because Kale McCarr has he missed, he missed some games. Oh, he has 18 goals. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> That'll help. Yeah. That's crazy. But, that was some. Those are some good numbers. That was there. fun. Yeah, that was a little bit fun. Uh, anyhow, moving on uh, around the league, we had some. Anything happen? I don't think there was much. The Panthers lost. Panthers lost. Look at the yeah. standings, standings, people. The Leafs are so. It's first place is Tampa Bay with seventy six. Second place is Florida with seventy five. Leafs are in third with seventy four. It's going to be really tight down the stretch. Oh huh? yeah. Games are all even. Tampa Bay has a game in hand. Yep. Um, My ranking of preferred situations, number one is the Leafs win the division, but number two would be Tampa wins the division. Yeah. Yeah, you want you want Florida? Yeah. Some, and yeah. I think Florida, I Bring sent you guys, the their numbers are insane. They're, like, really good, but oh, yeah. all, Tampa's, like, build is hard to beat, I think. There's, there's also still, like, a few games left in the season, and Boston – has like kind of been on a winning streak lately. They're own mm-hmm. they're 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 they might start to creep in soon. There's, there's six a, there's six a heart points. trophy candidate on that. Or yeah. heart. A Calder trophy candidate on that team. Jeremy Swayman? Jeremy uh, yes. Swayman has Playing swung awesome. that season for them. Yeah. He is he's taken over. Funny because they just spent a bunch of money on a goalie. <laughs> Didn't you say that's a trap in terms of AAV for Allmark? It was just a little too long, a little too much money. Mm-hmm. It was just like we hadn't seen enough of we, I hadn't seen enough of him. I'm like, I don't know. You don't really know what you're getting. And on top of that, I mean, going to a new team is a little bit difficult. I do hope that he can bounce back next year a little bit better. He also hasn't even been that bad. He's just been like all marky. He's just like pretty average. Like he'll get the yeah. job done. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in Buffalo, he had two seasons where he actually was in the NHL. One of them, his five on five save percentage was terrible. And somehow it was good on the penalty kill, which makes no sense. And then the second season, it was it was decent on a terrible team. So it's like, I don't know. What are you really, really getting there? It's not like you've seen him for five seasons in a row, all these different scenarios, all these different builds in front of him. You saw him in front of Buffalo for, like I think, a grand total of 70 games. But also, that's such a Boston, like, lucky thing to get. <laughs> they signed this guy for $5 million for, what, five years? Four years. Four years. Five, yeah. Then – they tried to bring back Tuka Rask, who looked absolutely horrendous. And then we're like, yes, this is it. Boston's yeah, going to fall. Actually, They're right. done. No goalie. And now this guy who's been in their system for five years is putting up a 930 save percentage. They won five games in a row. It's unbelievable. And they sent him down. They it's sent crazy. him down and all of that. 
And but, Mar- and Marshawn, while Marshawn was suspended too, they won. I think they yeah. won. Um, I don't know how many they won and lost there, but yeah, yeah. Over his last seven games, Allmark has an eight ninety six, and Swayman is just Swayman's taken over. It lights out, yeah. I think it's it's fair to say that. I think this month he had like a nine forty. Yeah, like he's something like five one and zero oh or something like that. They they are a Crazy. prime like trade for a depth forward and depth D team. They're yeah. they're re- as about as top heavy of a team as you could find. Yeah, over his last five starts, Jeremy Swayman has let in more than one goal once. Oh. Jeez. Playing L.A., San Jose, Colorado, Ottawa, and New York. And by for any Leafs fan that wanted to re-sign Nick Foligno, he has one goal in 36 games this year. Not bad. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> that, was the, that was almost worse than Kadri, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I think that covers everything. We yeah. went through a good amount on this one. You guys have any closing thoughts? No. Nope. The, the next six games are... Probably the most favorable stretch of the schedule Ooh. left in the season. Trap game. But that's because it's like very, very it's no playoff teams. It's mm. Buffalo. It's Seattle. It's Buffalo. Like Vancouver. It's not there's not that many. who else is on the schedule? Uh for the next week Columbus? it's so Sabres, Columbus. Canucks, Columbus, Seattle. Oof. And then trap. they play the Sabres again. And they play the Sabres. Trap again. games there. But you know what? Let's get let's keep going. Let's mm-hmm. let's attack that top of the division. This is our time to claim the claim up the, the ground. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You had something about the YouTube you wanted to mention? Yeah, just, just wanted to say uh, we're, we're starting to post the podcast on YouTube now. We're, 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 splitting the, we're putting the whole podcast out. And we're going to split it up into clips as well. If you guys want to go over there and subscribe to Rank Rat Report on YouTube, that'd be great. Leave us a like. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you're saying. And if you're listening on YouTube, hey, how's it going? Give us a, give us a little like. Give us a little comment. Okay, let, let, let us know what you think of the episodes. Uh, and and how are, how are you guys you however you guys digest it just again leaving reviews and all that sort of stuff that it just tells the algorithm that you like our stuff and maybe other people will like it as well and helps us grow and finally if you like if you like our stuff enough share it with your friends let them know about it because um, maybe if they're at least fans like you they'll be interested in it too so yep. yeah just yeah. helps us grow so hell yeah brother thank you everyone for listening go Leafs go.